So, we're back with the Pruurvu Artist Talks and this time with our dear friend, family, uh, colleague, <laughs> uh, Boris. Everybody always confuses the Borises, so uh, I'm gonna call you Borft, <laughs> which is your stage name, but I always actually associate you with the ritual cycles more. Uh, this name got me, so maybe we can start by, uh, yeah, explaining the name. Uh, yeah, I'm Boris, uh, Ritual Cycles. I am a performer, recording engineer, label owner, uh, hardware nerd, software developer, and in general, human being. Ritual Cycles is uh, one of my projects. It's the... First projects I was really proud of and something that I'm happy to put in front of people. Um, and yeah, the name kind of speaks for itself. It's, um, yeah, I think it speaks for itself. I think your label name even speaks for itself uh, more, uh, Rhythm Research, because that's basically what you do. Uh, you keep on researching and I must say from my personal perspective or from our team's pr perspective, you really developed uh, your own identity by now, your own uh, sound, even your own kick, so to say. And uh, always a pleasure to hear it coming, uh, you know, in your sets or when I personally play music, uh, when the sound is coming, I always feel like uh, super warm and still complex, happy, but not too happy, you know, things that I like personally. <laughs> Um, cool, cool. Thank you. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe let's uh, dig a little bit back. So uh, back to your personal history. Yeah, you come originally from uh, Bulgaria. You were born in Bulgaria. Um, maybe a little bit about that, your childhood, or your musical background. Yeah, sure. I, yeah. I think uh, the label is a culmination of many years and many influences. As you said, I come from Bulgaria. When I was a teenager, I was listening to drum and bass. We had a very strong electronic music scene. I was not that much into techno. Back then, I thought it was kind of boring and monotonous. I was more into the punk aesthetic, which also kind of informed my DIY approach to the label. Um, yeah, I was really into drum and bass. I was producing drum and bass for quite some time, but never managed to get to the technical proficiency to be happy with it. I was always into this very overproduced technical sound, and I think it took me quite some time to get to the level where I wanted to be. And then when I got the technical proficiency, I had to look into the musical aspect of it as well. Um, yeah, so as I said, based, I was born in Germany, but then I'm actually Bulgarian. I moved to Germany then eventually when I was 18. So you were born in Germany? Yeah, I'm born in Germany. Wow. Now I'm actually German, so I'm kind of like, okay, maybe so you, not you moved potato, back and then you moved back again. Like sweet potato. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. super cool. And uh, you also, you have some musical background in your family, right? My grandfather was a trombone player in the musical theater. In oh, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> cool, yeah, because, uh, you know, I think uh, many artists in, the, in today's uh, scene uh, might have some uh, musical background, but not everybody. And I think it's crucial to be, not, not to be a successful artist, but it's crucial to, if you want to have your own sound, it's crucial to have like at least a basic uh, feeling for, uh, for, for music and uh, for creating sounds and not only good uh, selections. And yeah, so you have, uh, from, my, from my perspective, you have to, uh, you have, to have a good uh, feeling for that. Nice, nice, uh, cool story. So you came back to Berlin, which year was that? Uh, Berlin, I moved to maybe 2014. 14? Yeah. Okay, cool. Why? Um, I was based out of another German city, which was very boring. I was in Baden-Württemberg oh. and um, yeah, coming from the, I'm coming from Sofia, which is a capital city. And then I did really not fit in the smaller city there. I was missing a bit of the... You're not Schwabe enough. Uh, yeah, I was missing a bit this like dirtiness and this like punk feeling. And um, I feel like I was not 
I was missing the freedom of expression there. So when I moved to Berlin, I was really, really happy. Uh, this yeah, kind yeah. of looks like where I come from mm. in a good and in a bad way. Yeah, the post-Soviet, the punk uh, background, punk is really embedded into Berlin's uh, yeah, techno. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, and yeah, of course, the musical scene and the art scene and uh, people. I feel this is a place which has been reinventing itself for a hundred years and I feel like I belong here. Nice, cool. How was Berlin 2014? It was actually the time where uh, techno was uh, also at a kind of a peak. I you yeah I I would say so. Um, I think when I first moved in, I was not so much into the nice. sound that I'm into now. Yes. Uh, with I had a, like a really nice friend group, and then we would go out every weekend. But where to? Um, the different different places. We went a lot to uh, Katerblau. Nice. Um, nice. That was okay. <laughs> I think I went there so many times that I would not go there ever again. Enough. Uh, but Fair I enough. did. I did spend quite some time there. Um, I remember once on one weekend, I was just like in the middle area, just talking to people, and I didn't even go inside to listen to the music. And I still mm. spent like twelve hours, and I thought maybe that's not the place for me yeah. anymore. You became the mascot of the club. You should uh, uh, yeah. change the job. Other places where we went to was Hopetose. I think the Betrips fire there is one of the longest standing parties in Berlin, mm -hmm. which has stayed true to itself. So I recommend going there. Yeah. This is something to be witnessed. <laughs> yeah, we had a, we, we mentioned uh, Hopetose in one of our uh, talks. It's a funny place, definitely. Well, Betrips fire is, I think, one of the few events that is not thrown by Hopetose, so even the door crew, I'm not sure about the bartenders, but they're like... It's they're, not the house, like the home event of uh, Hopetose? I don't think so, I think no. their own organization and okay. the DJs are pretty pretty wild. Yeah, I thought it, it was called Betriebsfeier because it's like the company of uh, Hopetose uh, throwing a company's night, I don't know. Maybe, well, we'll find that out. We'll find maybe out. I'm, if I'm wrong, let me know. <laughs> Cool. So you feel like uh, your, your your sound definitely definitely changed uh, from 214 till till today. What were your uh, influences? What were like uh, maybe throw some names or some uh, or some uh, directions of sound that influenced you? So let's say pre-pandemic first. What what did you used to um, listen or be inspired by pre-pandemic? Um, I would say um, a lot of the albums on Ostgut were really inspiring, like mm -hmm. uh, Functions albums, Sandwell District, uh, but these are like the responses you would get from almost everyone, I guess. I was yes. really happy to see Sandwell District live in Trezor a couple of months ago. Nice. Um, but yeah, I was like always inspired a bit by the intersection between house and techno, so I was never really into like uh, super distorted super hard stuff i was always into the more mind-bending psychedelic stuff i think uh, definitely one of the most inspiring dj from the big names is rothad mm -hmm. i'm really into his sets yeah he's super so i would say also he's the label dystopian would be a good example of the aesthetic and the music Nice. I wonder what happens to that, uh, but I guess it's good to stop on a high note. Yeah. So I'm uh, driving a roller and Freddy sign, I think, a couple of weeks ago, randomly. Ah, yeah. 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 Typical. The, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, cool. And then uh, the pandemic came. Did you play, uh, did you perform before the pandemic, actually? When did you start performing? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I did i was throwing some of my own parties before that um but yeah i think i played during the pandemic which yes. you know that's how Where we, we met, met. <laughs> yeah uh, for the protocol i don't know uh, if you would like me to say that we can cut it out in the uh, post-production but we met in a, an illegal rave thrown by a friend of ours yeah that and, was, uh, it yeah. was wild a wild uh, rememberable uh, place and time and uh, yeah, I heard you uh, playing there, and it was really building up, developing. So I don't know how, how many hours you played, but, but it, was, it was at least two, three hours, I think. Yeah, I think th this set was pretty good. Yeah. I, 
you know, I'm very restless when I'm DJing, so I always yeah. play a lot of tracks. Yeah. It's kind of, sometimes it's difficult to keep it coherent. Yeah. But this one was even now, if you listen to the recording, you Is can just... Is there a recording of that set? Yeah, yeah. You can just hear it like building up and up and up. Please send it to me. I, I think I heard the recording. I'm not sure, but I would listen to it again, definitely. Yeah, the recording is up on uh, SoundCloud. Ah, okay, then I listen to it 100%. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then the the back, the thumbnail picture is me playing and in the background. There's like gay porn, so you would recognize yes, it. Yes, I know. Yes, now I, now I remember. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember when I uh, met you, you came up to me and you're like, yeah. oh my God, your set was amazing. I loved it. And I'm like, sure, yeah. <laughs> I, a lot of people come to DJs and they're like, oh, amazing, the who are you? <laughs> I would like, when are you playing again? And then they never yeah, appear yeah. again in your life and you did so. Yes, yes. Uh, that was our first uh, bondage. <laughs> bondage, yeah. We definitely bondaged. Yes. And uh, yeah, so afterwards, I'm, I'm super glad that we had the chance to meet in your studio. And uh, of course, uh, we will get the chance to see uh, some of the studio session um, um, in our in our episode, in this episode, uh, where we tried some 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 things out and just to get an impression of, uh, you know, of your workspace and your work vibes. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, super glad that uh, not only me, but uh, the team uh, got uh, got uh, to know you and to bond with you. I mean, for example, your the productions that you're doing with us, helping us out, and uh, the, yeah, the outcome is like I'm, I'm super happy with it. And yeah, for the protocol, uh, Boris uh, 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 produces, co-produces, and uh, masters and mixes uh, some of our uh, re releases. And uh, yeah, of course, we are big fans of his releases, uh, which we are. Uh, try to support so uh, shout out to this yeah. uh, collaboration <laughs> hope we do many more in the in the future so uh, yeah um, we talked in the studio session about the recent uh, release maybe you can add something uh, about that uh, your fourth uh, vinyl as well yeah yeah so so yeah the label started off as my as I said DIY playground I was really happy with some tracks um, and I wanted to like commit to that so I started the label. Um, I wanted it to be not only on digital but only have the vinyl release to like really reinforce the my commitment and also to you know kind of like solidify um, I guess my progress. So that's how the label started more like I, I didn't really have a plan for it. I just knew it had to happen. Nice. Um, I just wanted to do something on my own. I did not want to look for anyone to release my these tracks. I wanted everything to come from me, and mostly I just didn't want to deal with anyone. Uh, but that quickly changed after the first release. I like started having the appetite of also collaborating with other people. So the uh, the other releases on the label are the second and the fourth one are all various artists EPs with my friends. One of them is Jack, who we share a studio with. I I'm really blessed to have him as a studio partner because he's really into the technical aspect of music, but he's also really into like hard distorted mm -hmm. stuff. So whenever we are blessed to have time together in the studio, we would just go crazy making kick drums for hours and nice that's fun <laughs> and also with him um we did the live pa i don't know if we if you were at any of those maybe you were where we play modular and octatrack i, I think i heard one of your sessions uh yeah, yeah. so yeah the second we also performed together at uh, one of our uh, True. events yeah yes, yeah yes, yes. super nice so the second release was with him the third one is kind of Inspired by our live set with Jack, but it's just by me, Ritual Cycles, the God Eater EP. And now the fourth one, which is uh, probably the best production since I have expanded the vision by having proper artwork and not just pictures that I took myself. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, the fourth release is also various artists. It has uh, Davide Sort. Uh, who also has probably one of the most popular tracks on the label called Ten. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also Andrea, alias BMBMND, and Marco Maldarella, who also did the artwork. And I have the fourth track called Fourth Way. Yes. Sexy. Um, yeah, I'm 
we are really happy with the release. Releasing on vinyl comes with this extra test of patience where you have to wait up to a year. So it's amazing to have the release in our hands and people seem to love it. Yes, I really love it. I played the, all four tracks uh, already like in, uh, in the studio. Two of the tracks I played in my set, really fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like the EP itself, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's developing. Not, it's not that, like, that the four tracks are in the same kind of uh, niche genre or yeah. they're like really developing from the Thank first you. one to the fourth one. So, yes. I want to say it's pleasure. a plan, but it's accidental. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an accidental plan. It's probably because we all sat down and we did the tracks, especially for the release. So Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So you plan probably the next one uh, to do by yourself? Or are you gonna do it? Yeah, I think that would make sense because yes. like one, three, five yes. is only by me. Um, but yeah, I do like the concept of the various artists, but I would love to dig more into the individual artists. I would love to have a release just by Jack, uh, alias Reticent. Um, yes. But um, yeah, he's really good at producing a lot of material, but he's not really good at finishing stuff. So he <laughs> That's needs why he me needs there. A producer. But I would also love to have uh, one just by Davide. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very prolific, but he's never happy with his release. So I think with both of them, at some point, I just tell them, stop here. The track is ready. Give it to me. Which position do you feel most comfortable at or you feel comfortable with changing position? Uh, being, being only the artist, being the producer, being the releaser, so to say. Uh, which one do you feel most uh, comfortable with? It's, it's difficult to say. I love working on other people's music. I find this easier. I love collaborating on newer projects because uh, there's like a clear vision and clear way forward. Nice. So I love um, working for other people in a way. Uh, but I love the freedom also of just doing things on my own. Um, but yeah, I, I think for the label in the future, I would love... Now we have established this cadence of having one release per year. I would love to bump this up at least to two. Yes. Uh, but that's like, I think right now we lack the foresight. Mm -hmm. So I love that it's very organic, but yeah, it's a bit And you slow. balance all this, uh, all these projects and all this work with your daily work, which uh, brings yeah. me actually to the place where we're at right now. We're at the SoundCloud headquarters in Berlin. And yeah, you work at SoundCloud. And tell us more. Yeah, I'm a software engineer on the recommendations team at SoundCloud. I have always wanted to work here and I'm really happy to be working here. I am also part of the Works Council, which is a very interesting aspect of my life where I get to negotiate and mm. communicate. W how is the, which council? The Works Council. The Works Council, okay. Uh, so this is like a democratically elected nice. subset of people. <laughs> Maybe we, we cannot mention this part. <laughs> yeah. we, we can just uh, in passing say We skip say the it. council part. Yeah, yeah. It's not, union, it's yeah, not yeah, a it's union. It's not a union? <laughs> no. Because it's capitalistic? <laughs> no, because union is something else. Union okay. is like... It's, this one is just for SoundCloud. A union yeah. is with many different companies. Okay. I am not a union member. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. They, Good for SoundCloud that you are not a union member. Unions are <laughs> not great. Cool. So how is the, how is the atmosphere in SoundCloud? Is it like you imagined it to be? Maybe we can talk about <laughs> how I... <sighs> Maybe we, yeah. Uh, we, we don't talk about the atmosphere at SoundCloud. We can talk okay. about... We can start from the beginning with like, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> So you have a daily job, you have a day job, you have a nine to five job and you balance it with your artistic work. And uh, the question is, uh, how is it for you? Does it give you freedom, balance? Is it hard to ju juggle between? Uh, how do you see it? I love having a day job, to be honest. This keeps me um, financially independent and also leaves me to be completely free with my music. I see a lot of people who live in Berlin and I think it's important to make this dedication to your craft and to pushing things forward and focus solely on that. I think that takes a lot of courage and I respect everyone that does that. For me, it's 
easier to keep the two separate. I do not get to spend as much time on music as other people, but I do get to have complete freedom. So I do not have the pressure to have to look for gigs all the time or sell a lot of records or release a lot of music or throw a lot of parties or any of that. I get to drop the ball completely and not do anything at all. And I think that's really important for me. Also being uh, into software was a hobby, which turned to, into my job. And uh, I kind of lost something along the way. I like I lost the hobby and mm. I gained a profession and I would rather not have this happen to music as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, working at SoundCloud still gives me a bit of this. Yeah, you're kind of in, still in the sphere. Yeah. yeah. It's not like you uh, have to uh, write music during your daily job, but you're still uh, in the industry, so to say. But I, 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 I love your choice. I think every artist uh, stands uh, sooner or later in the crossroads uh, between uh, being suicidal about your art, you know, taking it uh, to the edge, but then also risking going completely commercial uh, just to, to feed yourself from your art <clears throat> or picking a daily job which consumes your resources and doesn't leave you a lot of free time and it's beautiful that uh, you can balance uh, those uh, these both and uh, yeah and still have uh, your muse yeah i feel like the type of person i am if i did not have the structure of conforming to society with my day job i would not be as i like to think successful with my music as i am now cool cool um yeah that i I can be very spontaneous about, hey, let's throw a party or... Which you recently did. Yeah, you... I threw a party. Uh, yeah, I think the, the job gives me, as I said, the financial stability to be able to, hey, let's just press this on vinyl or let's throw this party or let's get this person to do a video for us. So that's what we did with uh, the last release where we um, hired someone to do like a special video for nice. the YouTube premiere. I didn't see it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on the Hate channel. Nice. Yeah, so we got an art, we commissioned an artist for that. Um, the yeah. Hate channel belongs to the, like the Hate label. Yeah. And okay, cool, cool. How is is the is the release somehow connected to Hate or is it just a? Um, they just did a premiere for the. Ah, the premiere. Okay, the premiere was on Hate. Super. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely watch it. Cool. Uh, Berlin. You've been watching it uh, for some time as a raver, as an artist, mm -hmm. um, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, while pandemic. <laughs> what do you think? Well, what I'll say about this is I also we touched on this before. It's a city which has been reinventing itself yes. for so long. It's in the spirit of the city to for waves to come and go. I think everyone should be open to what the city is looking like now. Yeah. A Obviously, things changed during the pandemic, but I think a fresh wave of promoters, a fresh wave of people is good. I do see the vibe changing in clubs, but I do not want to pass judgment on anything. I think maybe we, what we can establish or talk about is what has not changed. Mm -hmm. We also talked about the trips fire, which has been like a long running party for 25 years. Uh, I would like to mention that a lot of people have stayed true and they have powered through and that's important for me. Another uh, club we, which I would love to mention is also Trezor, which uh, I think maybe it's a bit of people don't appreciate it as much there. The lineups of Trezor have just been consistently amazing for yes. forever mm -hmm. and the vibe there has also not changed mm -hmm. maybe it's not like what people or like people who live in berlin would go to but yeah. it's i think you have to give it to them that it's very consistent it's a welcoming institution and yeah yeah i think it, it's really inclusive in a way and that has i guess uh maybe uh, a bad connotation sometimes for yeah. people who are live here but yeah. touristic I think, whatever i think 
if the club is for everyone, then it should be for everyone. Yes. Even if they are not like, uh, even if they just wear normal clothes and sneakers yeah. and they come from the UK and they might be a bit drunk. Yeah. I think they deserve a good time also. Yeah, so if they behave, why not? You know? If they behave. Yeah. It is the kind of the rape spirit yeah. which so, uh, Dimitri is trying to implement there. I, I think, yeah, a lot is changing, but I, the, as I said, the fresh wave of promoters, you being one of them, is something that the city needs. Nice, nice. Yeah, I definitely think that Tozo is an institution. And I, from what I hear, they are also uh, kind of financially free, so they can... Uh, they can uh, act differently than other clubs that uh, need to pay a lot of bills. So, yeah, that gives them a certain freedom that also maybe Berkheim has. You know, but Berkheim still acts I differently. I wouldn't know. <laughs> what is this place? <laughs> um, cool, cool, cool. And musically? Well, what, 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 what do you think? Uh, I don't want to say Gen Z, but uh, what do you think about uh, the graphic of, of tempo? Uh, going up uh, the the vibes the hyper pop vibes how do you how do you take it in do you take it into your production are you get in, do you get inspired by that um for example we talked about gaba shortly mm -hmm. i think gaba throws us both into a very folkloric uh, kind of uh, post soviet <laughs> maybe even uh, like balkan uh, vibe uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to say that gaba throws you into a folk vibe <laughs> why i, I kind of I, okay so I, I studied this a little bit and i found out that hacking this uh, this dance that people do to to gaba we got a shit storm it's like, because it's like the shuffle no um, it's yeah but it's all, it's actually a dutch uh, folks dance and it's very very old right so i think people in villages okay. in like the yeah 70th century you know they kind of dance the same uh, from from Ukraine to Bulgaria cool. to uh, Holland, so yeah, it has a common uh, common sense. So you, do you let it? We think you will let it influence your uh, uh, future stuff, even in in a humoristic but good way. I think indirectly, as I said, by working with Jack, I really am influenced by high tempos and distorted stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I know what you're talking about and what you're alluring to the yeah the Gen Z music, which is like fast and dreamy. Cycles, man. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not ritual cycles, but uh, yeah, but some some like just think about the '90s and the Euro dance. That's it's the same stuff. Yes, like, it's absolutely. Fa it's faster and more. It's better produced and cleaner. But yes. uh, I, when I hear it, I can feel the emotion, which yes. it might not be exactly the music that I would enjoy or listen to myself. But some of the stuff that I have seen from you. I, I can feel it and that that's important and a nice. lot of the overproduced techno mental stuff I sometimes don't feel it I don't feel the soul I don't feel the the spirit so if it's good it's good nice yes cool yeah I think uh, it's also important for a foreign artist to be um in the zeitgeist, even if you don't create the zeitgeist yourself, you, you have to somehow be, be, because I think an artist should be like sensitive to the surrounding and get just at least inspired by, you know. Uh, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to music slowing down again. Yes, it's definitely, <laughs> it, it, it definitely going to, you know, some, some Berlin OGs told me that Berlin is actually not associated as originally as a techno city, but more of a house city. And I think just house is more of a bigger rooftop category than, than techno. So it's, sooner or later, it's going to come back to vocals. Sooner or later, it's going to go down a little bit and people are going to come down. Where do you see your uh, near future as, a, an, as an artist or as a, as a performer and as a, as a production house? I see some sort of synergy between the two. I've been really uh, enjoying doing the live performances way more than DJing. Nice. Uh, it's, it's a way for me to use all of the material that I have built up and not needing to polish it so much. And then I just get so excited to perform and the potential to fuck it up is uh, really intoxicating so i would love to do more of that shout uh, out to your live performance at beata uva thank you thank you <laughs> very yeah. og place the, uh, on the next alexander Platz. super overproduced tech house performance <laughs> nice. people did not expect that but uh, <laughs> i think just having the freedom to do that is great so uh, yeah i would love to do more live stuff i would love to dabble a bit with audio-visual performances like um, 
not have it super experimental like I would love to keep it groovy uh, but yeah I, I can get excited about coming up with something conceptual like that um, and regarding the music I don't know whatever I don't I don't want to push it my friend says uh, art is like a uh, fart if you push it only shit comes out. <laughs> <laughs> <Hello. laughs> That's uh, <laughs> it's precise. It's precise. It has to ninja. Psst. Nice. <laughs> and uh, with this uh, optimistic with this note, words of wisdom. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for this, and I hope to see you very soon in the studio and right afterwards and uh, on the dance floor and. Uh, I have so many good memories uh, from your sounds, and I hope uh, we can create many of uh, of these, many more of these. And the yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you how we make kick drums with Jack for eight hours. Okay, I'll, I'll visit for two of them. Okay, <laughs> cool, man. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>